Deem is doing is really transforming this phone into a digital key that unlocks the pathway into both Web3 as well as digital payments. You know, we have this deep belief that when, you know, data lives in open ecosystems outside the walled gardens of the, the big tech companies, we have a ton of innovation, a ton of creativity, things unlock, right? You get this fluidity and this capability. Um, but in Web3, we've, done, we've made two mistakes. We've won, we've highlighted the wrong use cases, trading cryptocurrencies and trading NFTs, um, and we've made it really, really hard. Right, so when NFTs are things like tickets or certificates, credentials, they're um, your health records, they're a title to a policy, they're a, an insurance, all these things can live as NFTs. The ability to make them composable and interactive are incredible. There's so much creativity that can happen with that, but the user experience has been too difficult. So what we do is we take a global unique identifier, being your phone number, bind it to this device by actually calling the carrier's API and saying, hey, is this phone number active on this device right now? We use the local device biometrics and pass keys to be able to bind this user to this device. And then we wrap that in a really simple authentication framework that instead of logging with Google, you can quite literally log in with your phone. One of the things we try to sit right in between is brilliantly simple and very secure, right? So this idea of simplicity and security tends to be on opposite ends of the spectrum, right? Well, when you do things like if a phone number, we can tell is it a bot or is it a carrier issued um, physical device, right? So you, you, you immediately uh, um, uh, scan for any bots. Um, there is no account takeover because there are no passwords. Right? So if you have your phone, you have your password. So in many ways, we love really good security and requirements for good security because what we're trying to do is really thread the needle between the simplicity and the security. So whether it's SEC or simply a lot of the other regulatory agencies around, um, both for Web3 and digital payments. So one of the things that we realized was as we initially started in the Web3 world, digital payments have a lot of the same problem. Like, how do I trust this person at the end of this transaction to know that it's a real user, it's not an account takeover, it's not a bot, um, and the same solution of, hey, we can bind this global directory system, this phone number, to a device, to a person, seamless for the user, but it really uh, imbues strong trust, whether you're in the Web3 world or in the digital payments world. We see Money 2020 is such a, a gathering of great minds and great companies. So, you know, a number of customers that are here, a number of partners that we're talking with um, and saying, hey, guys, there's a simpler way to onboard folks into Web3. Something I didn't get into. So my part of my background is I ran biometrics and identity for Alibaba um, Financial Services, or I'm called Ant Group. So their whole purpose was how do we bring the unbanked, the underbanked, those that haven't been living in the technical digital world into that. So from a simplicity and, a curious, uh, uh, and with great security. So whether I was working in China, India, Indonesia, Philippines, just have a ton of experience on how do you make it really simple um, and convenient and understandable for the consumers, but yet also have really good security. So being with some great folks, um, you know, I'm speaking on Tuesday as well. I'm up on stage at 1150 um, talking about, you know, Web3 and digital payments in the palm of your hand. Thank you.